This training video is brought to you by K-Alliance. K-Alliance provides high-quality instructor-led training videos for desktop, IT and soft skills. Visit us online at www.kalliance.com to sign up for your free 7-day trial. Be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching and we hope you learned something new. Real learning, real videos, real success. In this demo, we are going to be working with our performance monitor within Windows so we can see the data that can be collected regarding SQL Server and how that data might be useful within our SQL Server environment. Now, for this, we're going to go to our Start button and we're going to go to our search and type in Perfmon. And as you're typing, Performance Monitor should come up at the top. Go ahead and select Performance Monitor and we're off and running. Now, your Performance Monitor is important because when we're trying to monitor the activity of our server, it's not just about what SQL Server is doing. It's about everything that's happening on that physical server. And so while all of our SQL Server tools are very useful, they only show us the SQL Server perspective. Perfmon gives us the Windows Server perspective. We have a number of things that we can do from within this environment. First is we can select our performance monitor, and this gives us a running record of what's happening on the server. Right now, it's only looking at percent processor time. And so it's showing us how the processor is working on an ongoing basis. Now, this basic performance monitor can be adjusted by adding counters to the environment. You'll notice the big green plus in the toolbar at the top. If I select that, I have the ability to add counters into this environment. Now, these counters are separated in a variety of different ways. First off, I can look at only the local computer, or I can, in fact, browse to other computers. So if this is part of a networked environment where there are many servers involved, I can pick one server to be my monitoring server, and I can then connect to all of my other servers and pull key performance counters from each one and track them together in one place. Very useful. It is recommended that that monitoring server not be the same server that's running SQL Server because the more of these counters and the more of this type of data that you're collecting, the more of a performance hit you're going to get on your server. If you can isolate it out and set up a server that is dedicated to monitoring, that doesn't have SQL Server or anything else running on it, you'll have a much better overall experience. Now, from there, I can pick my server. I can then pick amongst the objects. So there are a lot of different types of objects that I can work with. We have processor objects. We have objects dealing with reporting server, we have objects dealing with internal services within Windows, we've got our SQL Server agent and its alerts and jobs and stats that we can pull. So this is the actual service account that's working with our agent and all the things that it's trying to do. We can look across all of the internal components of our Windows environment. So you can see we have a lot of options here that we can pull from. If I start up at the top again, we have ones for .NET, for ASP.NET, for our individual database management. So there's instances and table classes. We've got our event tracing information and our event sessions. So there's no shortage of categories of information that we can capture. If I look at my memory and I expand that out, within the object, I get a series of different counters that I can work with. And I can select them all and bring them all across or I can individually select the ones that I'm interested in and just bring those. So to keep it easy, I'll go ahead and just bring all the memory stuff across at once by hitting my Add button. So I'm doing Memory Star. Give me all of the data in the memory category. When I hit OK, all of those counters are now added into my environment and I can see, color-coded, the behaviors of my memory across the server. So very handy to be able to work with this environment and extend it out. But this environment only shows you what's happening in the here and now. I'm seeing as time passes directly what's happening. What if I want to be able to save this information, track it, do baselines, to work against over time so I can see trends? Well, all of that is possible, but not from this screen. In order to do that, we move to our data collector sets. Our data collector sets come in two varieties. We have our system 
and are user defined. So in our system, we have a couple pre-built types that have a lot of really valuable information about the server. If we open up our system diagnostics one, it shows us all of the counters that it's tracking as part of the system diagnostic, all the details. We also have our system performance and what are the components associated with it, the performance counters. If I open one of these up, they have with them reports. So the details of them are here, what, what are the components associated with them, but the reports with them are built down below. So I could go into my system reports or my diagnostic reports, but they require that these have been run. So we look at the storage system and when I'm ready to look at the performance, I can right click on my system performance and hit start. This will launch this particular data collection set, which will now build a new report about the performance of my server as it's going. Now, the longer you let this run, the more data you'll have and the richer that data will be. So we'll give that a moment to run. I could also go ahead and start my diagnostic one as well. And that's going to set a report inside of our diagnostics. So now I have both of those running and capturing information. While those are collecting, uh, it doesn't want them both running at the same time. That's fine. We'll start the other one in a moment. So while we have that running, we'll look at a few other pieces. When we come under our user defined, we're able to build our own data collector sets, and those will build their own reports under our user defined. You'll also notice that we have event trace sessions and the startup of our event trace sessions. So these tie back to that SQL Server event trace model. So we have the ability to manage new event trace sessions in here as well. So I can build data collector sets that are types of trace sessions. We'll give that a name. And notice I can create it from a template or manually. If I go from a template, then I have to pick from existing templates that have already been created. If I don't have any, I'm not going to get very far. So we'll come in and we'll do a different one that's going to be based on manual. Oh, on manual. From here, I can pick my providers and it's going to load any available providers within the, within the system to try and pull from. So the process here is trying to tie together event information, system information, user defined sets of counters that you're interested in, all into a series of reports that we can build on. So I'll give that a moment to try and pull itself together. In the meantime, when you're thinking about this, do be careful because the more of these things that you have running, the more likely you are to slow down your server because all of these do have a footprint on the server and the more of them that it's got going, the more different types of counters it has to track, the more data it has to collect, the more reports it has to build, the more work the server is doing and that's pulling resources away from the rest of your SQL environment. So we can now see that our event trace provider has given us .NET language runtime providers, Active Directory providers, certificate providers. There's a lot of different types of events that Windows is able to track. And they're all here for us. You can see with a list this long why it took it so long to load. As I work my way through, I can look and see if any of them jump out at me as things that I want to track. We've got security-based ones stuff about the underlying Windows environment, terminal connections, a lot of different ways that we can track information. So as you work through, decide what are the kinds of things that you want to track, and you can build events off of those components. If I get all the way down to SQL, I can go to my SQL 2012 instance and do a trace on it. So now I've got my SQL 2012 trace, and I've got properties that I can set with that. So I've got manual-based properties and automatic for each one of these elements. I can change their values if necessary. And when I'm done, I can move to next. I can tell it where I want to store that information. Again, we'll go to our marketing folder. I can choose if I want to work with this data collector set running as a different user 
Do I want to open the properties of it? Do I want to simply start it right away? Let's go ahead and have it start. So as we work through these different environments, it's building out the pieces for us. So at this point, we should have some good information inside of our performance monitor. So I'll go ahead and open up that report. Woohoo! <laughs> we got a whole lot of data that was captured in there. And I can unclick any of the counters that I don't want to see. The problem is I chose so many memory items to pull in that the, <laughs> the report's a little overwhelming. And so as we work through, we can add or remove counters, save our settings, zoom in, hide the selected counters, all sorts of fun things to try and eliminate what we're working with. So if I want to only look at a few of these things, I'll unselect a few and then hide the selected counters. So I'm you know, working through a bunch of these. Let's see, we'll just hit a whole bunch at once, thin this out a bit. There we go. So we're slowly reducing the burden of our, on our eyes. There we go. So now I've got it down to just a few. And the idea here is I can add them and remove them again as necessary, but it's tracking the actual information that was going on during the report run so I can see the detailed information. This is the way these counters work. You add them in, you build these reports, these become your baselines so you can track all sorts of interesting information about what's happening from the server perspective. Now, as we were saying, these are your system-based ones, and there's one for performance and one for diagnostics. We can also build our user-defined ones. These are all data collector sets. We have different ones like our basic that we can build in. Or if I wanted to, I could build one based on performance. So we'll do a couple. It's fine. Do, do, do. So I have a new data collector set, now under my user defined. <coughs> now under my user defined, I have the ability to look at the performance counter, the configurations. Again, this is the details of the set. As it runs, it starts collecting new information for a report, which I can then pull up, and it collects the data that's been gathered so far and generates the report for me to work from. So all these give me the ability to track interesting information about my server, whether it's the built-in system ones, whether it's user-defined ones, whether it's event trace data. All of these are at my fingertips, and I can build them to run over time. I can apply schedules to them. And this is very important because this is how we do our baseline and our trend tracking. As these things build up, if I'm running them daily, weekly, monthly, whatever your pattern is, it gives us the ability to look across time and see how things changed. And so now I'm looking at the basic set of information within this environment. And again, I can decide which things I want to look at at any given time. We've got a lot of CPU processor stuff built into this. So we had one that we did that was memory. This one was more CPU based. And I can actually move across this. And it tells me what each one of these counters is when I mouse over it as well as some of the basic information that's associated with it. So you don't have to rely on what's down below. I can directly interact with the graphic as needed. We hope you enjoyed this preview video. Please click on the like button below if you did and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Be sure to visit us at www.kalliance.com to sign up for your free seven day trial today. You could learn a lot in a week.